Hello everybody and welcome back to the end of season 3 in charge of the general with the Sir Alex Ferguson challenge. We'll be playing AC Milan in our final game of the season and then we'll be discussing a few bits and bobs. So we've played about 8 or 9 league games since the last time we met. The first of which was a 4-0 away win against Kiev or Adam Klozek, Thiago Almada and Moise Keane with the brace. We then beat Bologna 3-2 at home. Vignato scored in the 94th minute to make it a little bit nervy, but Hlozek, Keane and Almada, all three strikers, getting on the score sheet. Then a hugely disappointing performance away from home against Napoli. We got beat 3-2. Adam Hlozek with a brace for us had levelled things up after Napoli had went ahead. But then our fourth or fifth choice centre-back who was involved due to injuries and suspensions got himself sent off and they scored the resulting penalty. We then beat uh, Spezia 3-0 at home. Alcaraz, Hlozek and an own goal. A disappointing 2-1 away defeat followed that. Liberato put us in front five minutes in, but a Michi Batshuayi brace. <laughs> Looking at the match stats, we should have at least got a draw out of this game, but it wasn't a B. We then beat Fiorentina 3-0 at home. Adam Hlozek and Moise Keane on the score sheet. We then beat Roma at home 3-1 at Chris Marlon on goal. We went down to 10 men after that at 1-0 up, and we still managed to pull away with the win. Adam Hlozek getting a goal, Lazaro getting a goal. They eventually got one back in the 80th minute. Adam Hlozek had one ruled out. But um, nice win. And you might see something a little bit different here in terms of the formation. Um, I have been thinking about some things in terms of how... I think I've maybe took this tactic as far as I can go. And maybe a change is required in the summer for us to really take that next step to being an elite club. But I used it against UVA anyway and we drew 2-2 away from home. Gabriel Barbosa had put them in front and doubled the lead 31 minutes in. But Adam Plozek and Moise Keane got us back into it. So yes, we've qualified for the Champions League for next season, which is absolutely fantastic. Obviously, we can't drop below third place now and we can't get to second either. So this game against AC Milan, it's just for a little bit of a showcase of this tactic and exactly if, if it's going to work, I'm not sure. So when I was thinking about changing things up, pretty much every single striker we've got can play as a winger. Adam Plozek can play on the left or right. Thiago Almada can play as the, on the left or right. Moise Keane, although he's returning to Everton at the end of the season, can play both sides. Lazaro will play on the left. And uh, the strikers... And there's, there's one player. I've got to show you the player. He's the reason. Basically, I've seen him available for 20 million quid. And I thought, I want him, even though I don't use wingers. It's this guy here, Savio. Um, he plays in Brazil. He's got a minimum fee release clause of about £21 million. He's a right winger. Uh, he's rated as a four-star player in our squad already. And if worst comes to worst and this system doesn't work out and we have signed this fella, he can play up front as well. So I'm thinking if we'll, this will be a good test case against AC Milan. They're currently sitting ninth. We are at home. It's a bit of a nothing game for us at least, whereas I think they're still actually competing to be able to get European football. So... We'll wait and see how it goes. We might end up having to switch back, but I'm, I'm, I like the wingers with Manchester United, and I think I might like the wingers again if we end up going down with this system. But this is how we're going to line up. Spot yellow in goal. Giglione, Niklo Armini, Amedzevic, and Liberato in the defence. Melodioni and Locatelli are in the centre of midfield. Alcaraz uh, picked up a knock a couple of games ago, so he's out for today. He is on the bench and he can play, but I'll not be bringing him on. Thiago Almada on the right-hand side with Adam Hlozek on the left-hand side. I think I'll make Adam Hlozek an inside forward just to get the most out of his finishing capabilities. And then Lazaro and Moise Keane will lead the line. I think if, let's say, Moise Keane returns, so we've got Lazaro, Thiago Almada and Adam Hlozek still at the club at the start of next year. I'm not sure which two of them three would play up front and which one would drop to the wing. I think Thiago Almada would have to drop to the wing. He would have to go on that right-hand side. He's definitely... More of a midfielder than an attacker anyway, at least in my eyes. And it's not just that Savio either. When I've been looking for players um, to play in our system, I keep coming up uh, against really, really talented young wingers. It seems to be a big bit of a theme in terms of the regens and stuff. So I think I, I want to go for it. It's just whether it's a good idea or not to change in such a drastic way. But as we do have a highlight here, Amedzevic gets the block in three and a half minutes in and we win the ball back. It's punted long to Lazaro, brings it down nicely. Moise Keane, he can attack that defence and he gets in behind. He's three goals behind Gabi Adini as the top scorer in Serie A, so he's got... He needs a hell of a game if he's to finish top goal scorer. Another highlight now, Liberato to Adam Hlozek from the throw and deep on the left-hand side. Can we find that little dink through the middle? Locatelli, back out to Liberato. It's through for Lazaro. Is he offside? That is the only question. Doesn't look like he is offside. 
That's his 16th goal of the season to get us 1-0 up 10 minutes in. Another highlight now, Giglione with a throw, and this time down the right-hand side. Lazaro whips it in, and it is cleared. Locatelli out of Liberato on the left. We've got four men in the box, and he decides to shoot, which is a little bit disappointing considering I told him not to shoot. But Adam Hlozic can shoot, and he does shoot with his 27th. Uh, considering the start he had this season, he was absolutely dreadful once he returned from injury. 27 goals for the season is not too shabby at all, and of course that's his first goal from the left-hand side. Highlights straight from kickoff. Our AC Milan going to get themselves back into this. Herrera brings it down. Liao, he drives it out of defence and he gets through. Sporty Yellow with a fantastic save, managing to get it out for a corner as well. You love to see it. One of the other reasons why I was considering a change of formation. A lot, and I mean a lot of our players, are currently wanted by Europe's elite or big clubs who could potentially give us plenty of money for them. As Lazaro's in behind, Donnarumma saves. Um, so we could end up having a massive uh, massive transfer window in terms of incomings and outgoings. So it, it gives you the perfect template to be able to maybe tinker with things a bit and investigate some changes. But the tactic itself in terms of the team's instructions hasn't changed that much really. We've went a little bit more wide in our attack and play. And uh, we've obviously, because we've lost the defensive midfielder, I've sort of reined in the wing backs a little bit. But... Apart from that, nothing's really changed. It's just the formation. To our goal, Mada with a free kick. Adam Hlozek, oh, good save by Donnarumma. We're getting plenty of opportunities. Uh, could be 3 or 4 nil up here. We do have a corner. We'll stick with it. Melagioni is going to play it short to Thiago Almada. It's Adam Hlozek. Uh, I'll have to play with my corner tactic because that should be Almada. Benesso with a free kick for AC Milan. Sport yellow claims it acrobatically. And uh, we're not very wide. Nice pass to Moyes Keane, though, through the middle. He gets past his man. He's going to go for goal himself. Another good save by Donnarumma. And, I mean, looking at the match stats, we've completely dominated this game. And our expected goals is fantastic. We're creating good quality opportunities. So, um, yeah, I'm sort of sold on this winger formation, I think. Another highlight now. AC Milan are on the break. Anel Emetsovic with a fantastic challenge. Liberato can play it down this left-hand side for Moyes Keane. He's got Lazaro in the box. He's going to go for it himself. And Donnarumma is having a fantastic game. And he's thwarting Moyes Keane. He could have had a hat-trick um, so far with the opportunities he has had. Melodjoni to Hlozek from the corner. Out to Lazaro. It's cleared and that's probably going to be that. Unless it's an AC Milan hop. Nope, it's not. Liberato's brought him down. As you can see, Donnarumma's having a fantastic game. Currently on an 8.2. We will look to make some changes. We'll bring off Locatelli. Um, we'll bring on Tag Seth for him in the centre of midfield. Is there anyone I re I would like to get Sardella on for Giglione, and we'll save our final sub just in case there is an injury. And I think we've missed a goal. We have AC Milan have just scored. Horta gets uh, one back for AC Milan. We'll see it on the replay here. It's a counter attack. He picks up the ball in the midfield. He drives through. <laughs> we've missed a hell of a goal. I can't believe it. Completely does our defence in behind. Spot yellow, no chance. And AC Milan get themselves back into it. 15 minutes to go. Are AC going to get themselves a draw out of today's game? Donnarumma's kick up. Oh, it's Enel Medsevic. That's a defensive error if I've ever seen one. Thankfully, they can't take full advantage. 10 minutes to go. We haven't dealt with the long balls well. In the highlights, we've seen Liberato deals with this one. Lazaro heads it down. Uh, Klosterman is there. They've definitely came back into this in the final 20 minutes or so. Herrera. Plays it through. Rafael Leo is in behind again. Sporty Elo. He's having a fun. Both goalkeepers having both good games. And we are going to make that change as well. Filippo Melagioni comes off. And uh, Thomas Belmont goes on in the centre of midfield for him. Another highlight now. Tag Seth on the corner. Plays it Adam Hlozek. It's whipped to the edge. Lazaro back to Tag Seth. Amedsevic to Hlozek. That would have been a fantastic goal. We do work it in. But I think he's offside there, surely. Oh, he's not. Moise Keane does get his goal. He's 33rd goal of the season. And um, with seven minutes to go, he just needs another three. Here we are, Lazaro on the right-hand side. It's whipped in. Donnarumma claims. That will not be the highlight. Again, them big kick-ups uh, are doing our defence, really. We'd struggle to deal with that. Thankfully, Sporty Yellow can clear Sardella. Can play it out to Thiago Almada. Don't lose it there, because we've got plenty of players forward. If he can find a decent ball, he gets past his man. He finds ugh, feeds it to Tag Seth and Moise Keane. He's offside. Never mind. Probably the final highlight of the game. Two minutes left to go. Moise Keane heads it down to Tag Seth. Thomas Belmont on the edge. He's got Sardella in acres of space on that right-hand side if he's got the foresight to switch it. He can't, though, and AC Milan get a clear long ball over the top. 
caused us all sorts of problems all game. Horta's pass, though, is a little bit poor, and we survive once again. Adam Plozek, oh, a nice little through ball from Moise Kane, who's in behind. Can he get his second of the game? He can. He's had so many opportunities. He could have actually become the top goal scorer if he'd taken them all. But um, two will do. He's 34th of the season. Genoa 4, AC Milan 1. This is a fantastic performance. One of the best performances of the season. But we still have another highlight. <laughs> one and a half minutes left. And El Medsevich, lovely ball over the top for Liberato, who's got acres of space on this left-hand side. Donnarumma with a decent save at his near post. Is this a highlight? Thiago Almada? No, can't keep it in. Referee, blow the full-time whistle. And there we have it then, boys. Genoa 4, Milan 1. A fantastic performance and a fantastic win to round out our campaign. Let's go through the end-of-season stuff and discuss the squad and future transfers. So the final Serie A table we do, of course, finished third. Gabby Yadini, top goal scorer with 30 goals, but Moise Keane in second place with 27. Cremonese, Torino and Chievo get relegated. Lazio, ourselves, Juventus and Inter Milan in at the Champions League with Inter Milan reclaiming their Serie A title, which they won last uh, the first season of the league. And here we have our end of season review. The new arrivals will be the first one that comes up. It was a busy season in the transfer market. And we've done some fantastic business. Moyes Keane probably being the best signing of the summer. Again, on loan. If Everton want to loan me him again next season, I mean, I wouldn't be against it. Liberato for £8 million has been a phenomenal signing. Here are his attributes. He's progressing lovely. He did have a little bit of an injury, which is half the reason why his attributes are coming back. But he is an end game left back. I do not need to worry about left back again unless we end up selling him. Dion Drena Belgio was signed for 4.9 million in January. He was just a backup signing, really. But he is a well rounded striker, at, still at 21 years old. Could have a future at the club, but likely with us reducing the amount of strikers we're needing to uh, two strikers rather than three, we might end up loaning him out for next season. Lazaro, 11 million quid. He's going to feature a lot more prominently next season. He's developed quite well, as you can see by his stats, his attributes. Uh, he started 21 games, substitute 10, 16 goals, 4 assists. A 7.02 average rating is nothing to sneeze at, and he's been great. Uh, Edvard Tagseth as well. Is that our key? Do they reckon that? They reckon Tagseth was our best signing. I completely disagree. Uh, 5.3 million pound from Rosenborg, though. He's a capable midfielder, but he's not quite the one. You know what I mean? He is wanted currently, actually. Who is he wanted by? Everton, Fulham, and Sheffield United. So he might be one of the players who sacrificed again because we're introducing wingers, we're losing the defensive midfielder. He was brought in to be either a central midfielder or defensive midfielder, so he might find his spot at the club under threat. Melodjoni, we didn't sign him. That was a deal that was already agreed. Svetozar Markovic, absolutely gutted by this signing. 16 million quid. His attributes are through the floor. Hopefully, he will recover well during the summer and then come back to us, at least slightly revitalise and then look to progress his career with us next season. Locatelli, two and a half million quid. Kind of complain with that. He played 21 games for us after only joining us in January. Six assists as well. I'm hoping we'll see better performances from him playing in the central midfield role as the deep lion playmaker. Uh, Sisboro, we did not sign. That was not me. Patrick Berg on loan. He made 27 substitute appearances, so he came in handy. And uh, Stojinovic, he made one appearance and got a red card. So that'll tell you all you need to know about him. So the board expected top off from us this season. Of course, we finished third. Our, our home attendance has been fantastic this season. 84%, uh, 30,878 over the course of the season. I think our first season up something like 23,000. So a massive improvement there. Moise Keane, the top goal scorer. A minus for board confidence. And that is fantastic. Moments to remember. Our biggest win was the 6-0 win against Porto in the Champions League. Lazaro getting himself a hat-trick there. Match to remember was the 3-1 away win against Lazio. That was a good match because we struggle against Lazio pretty much all of all the time. Goal of the season was Thiago Almada's 26-minute goal against Liverpool in that 5-2 win, which didn't mean much in the end. But thankfully, it was a good performance from the boys, so I'm not too mad at saying that. In terms of finances, they've massively improved this season, purely down to the Champions League money, really. Um, our club reputations went up as well, so the kind of players we can sign will be a little bit better. But our sponsorship and everything, broadcast revenue, everything went up. Competition prize money up by £40 million this year, which pretty much satisfies all of the increase we had. The increased broadcast revenue as well from the Champions League. 16,000 shirts sold with Lozak being the number one. This was how we typically lined up. As you can see, two of the problem positions I want to sign in the summer, goalkeeper and right back. 
two of our lower performers from those who started regularly. Uh, Melagioni and Locatelli, you could look at them and say, uh, maybe you need to replace them, but Locatelli, we do not need to replace. I'm not replacing him. The accolades, at least it's a bit different this season. Last season, it was all Adam Plozek. This season, the fans player of the year was Enel Medzevic. The young player of the year was him as well. Sign of the season was Edvard Tagseth. Goal of the season was Thiago Almada. Top goal scorer was Moise Keane. Most assists was Almada. Most man of the matches was Moise Keane. And highest average raisin was Enel Medzevic. Record breakers, Svetlisar Markovic, his transfer fee was a record. Um, we'll not talk about that. And Lazaro, or fastest goal, 17 seconds. Not too bad. So in terms of the squad next season, we're, probably, we're, we're likely to lose Moyes Keane. So he won't be there. Lazaro will likely be up front. And maybe Adam Hlozek will be up front or on the left-hand side. I do. It depends who we can sign. Um, I'm hoping we can sign that uh, right midfielder. Uh, Savio, and he can play there. Thiago Almada, maybe on the left-hand side. Uh, Manuel Locatelli, I'm happy with. Maybe a new central midfielder, but if we can't get one, I'm um, more than... Oh, actually, what am I talking about? I've got Carlos Alcaraz. He will be in the centre of midfield. Probably not as a box-to-box -box, uh, playmaker. Box-to-box um, -box playmaker. There's a new player role for you. Maybe Locatelli goes in as the box-to-box -box with Alcaraz as the deep lying playmaker. I quite like that. So, uh, our centre midfield looks pretty solid. Liberat was fine. Enel's fine. Armini likely won't be our starter. It will probably be Markovic. Giglione, I need to sign a new player for. And Sport Yellow, I need to sign a new player there as well. So you're looking at right midfield, right back and goalkeeper. We've got a budget of £44 million with 133k available in the wages. That will be increasing, I believe, at the end of the season once players leave. Um, I think we'll have around 200 k all said and done, which is fantastic compared to last season. We had £16 million quid last season, so a big, big increase there but one of the problems with our squad as things stand is a lot of players are wanted so we could end up in a situation where either we want to sell players or we just have no choice Thiago Almada is wanted by pretty much everybody in Europe so he will likely end up getting some bids in Killian Sardello will back up right backs wanted by a couple of clubs Edvard Tagseth we've already seen is wanted by some Premier League clubs Adam Plozek he's still got the minimum fee release clause of about 45 million quid so and he's wanted by some of the biggest clubs in Europe. Niccolò Armini is wanted by Udinese, I believe. And Anel Amedsevic is wanted by Barca. So we might have a struggle to keep some of our players. And it might be, like, obviously we only want them three positions. But it might end up being a huge, huge summer transfer window. It just depends on what happens. But anyway, boys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And I hope you're looking forward to the summer transfer window, which will be coming in the next episode. If you are, please consider leaving a like, getting yourself subscribed. And until next time, take it easy.